Hi folks, HR Funk here with my collection of Marlin lever action rifles. Now I don't know about you, but to me, Marlin is almost synonymous with lever action rifles. Now I know they've made some other types of firearms, they've made some semi-autos, they've made some shotguns, but in my mind I most closely associate Marlin with their lever actions. And that's what I have in my collection. In fact, I have six Marlin lever action rifles currently in my collection. And I thought it might be fun to go through these and pick my favorite Marlin lever gun. Now, each one of these is my favorite for specific purposes, but in this video what I'm going to do is go through and try to pick my all-around favorite for anything I might want to do. And I'm going to go through each one of the contestants, and I'll introduce you to that contestant, tell you a little bit about that particular rifle and what I like to use it for, then I'll make my way through and eventually choose my favorite all-around Marlin lever gun. So here we go. Now some of you might be wondering why I'm selecting my favorite Marlin lever action rifle now when the Marlin brand is in a state of flux, having just been purchased recently by Ruger. And I think it's particularly timely because hopefully someone from Ruger might see this video and listen to some of the things that I'm going to say about these rifles and maybe take that into consideration with the models that they ultimately are producing under the Marlin name. So with that out of the way, let's meet our contestants. Now in general, as I make my way through the rifles on the table in front of me, I'm going to be going from smallest to largest in terms of the cartridge that each one of these rifles chambers. So, in that line, I'm going to start out with my trusty 39A chambered for the 22 rimfire cartridge. Of all the rifles that I have laid out here, this one has to be the most fun, and it's certainly the one that I've shot the most. In fact, at the home where I used to live, I could go out on my back deck with this rifle, and I had a metal spinning target set up about 20 yards away, and I would sit there and plink and plink with this thing for hours at that metal target. And it was a lot of fun, and I don't have, know how many hundreds or maybe thousands of rounds I've run through this particular rifle. And it ran them all very, very well. I don't remember any kind that ever didn't want to cycle properly in this particular rifle. And it would chamber everything and, and function with everything from the Calibris, which I don't even believe have any powder inside them, all the way up to something like the CCI Stingers or the Remington Yellow Jackets, which in 22 terms are fairly powerful. The accuracy with this rifle has always been acceptable. With some types of ammunition, it's very good. And as I said, this is just a very fun rifle appropriate for anything from plinking to target work to small game hunting. And one thing I did with this rifle to try to help the accuracy just a little bit is I outfitted it with a Marbles Tang sight. And I'll come up a little closer. So you can see that sight that I have there. And with that sight, I've increased the sight radius with the rear sight here and the front sight at the end of the 24 inch barrel. You can see what the sight radius would be with the factory setup. But with the Marbles Tang sight, I've increased that sight radius by probably a good eight inches, maybe nine inches there. I've never measured it. But even so, this is the first contestant. It's the first one that I'm going to introduce to you. And now, let's move on and see the other competitors on the table behind me. Next up is the star of one of my most popular videos. This is my 1894 CP chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge. This, like 39A, is a lot of fun. It's also the most compact rifle. In fact, this is a carbine that I have on the table in front of me. It's very packable. It's lightweight. It's quick handling. And I really, really like this little carbine. It also hits with the authority of the 357 Magnum cartridge out of a 16-inch barrel, which is some oomph. That's enough for deer hunting, particularly close-range deer hunting, and just about any smaller game that you might want to use. This would be a very handy, very packable little option. I'll come up a little closer so you can see this one also. And I also added a different rear sight on this. this time it's a Williams receiver sight that I have added and I can if I want to remove the aperture disc here and have what amounts to a ghost ring sight with this particular carbine making it very fast to get on target and even working well with moving targets. So this is number two in my collection and as I said I really really like 
the 1894CP. Moving on, our next contestant also comes from the 1894 lineup, but this time it's an 1894SS chambered for the 44 Magnum cartridge. This one has an 18 inch barrel, and also, as you can see, the barrel and the receiver are made of stainless steel. This is the one when it's inclement weather that I like to grab if I'm going out deer hunting and it's going to be raining or it's going to be snowing and I don't have to worry, or at least not worry as much, about any type of rust with this particular rifle and it hits with the authority of the 44 Magnum cartridge. The slightly longer barrel, slightly longer than the other 1894 I mean, along with having the larger 44 Magnum cartridge also improves the ballistics somewhat even though I'm still using a handgun cartridge, I've always found the 44 Magnum to be very, very efficient in terms of harvesting game. Most of the deer that I've shot with the 44 Magnum have been shot with handguns chambered for that cartridge, and it has been very effective, and the 1894 even more so. I'll come up and give you a closer look at this one. And with the 1894, or excuse me, the 1894SS, I did not choose to change out the factory sighting system, so I still have the semi-buckhorn rear sight, and that also makes this probably the fastest in terms of sighting or in terms of using with moving game, but not nearly the most precise. Even so, this is a fantastic carbine, and I really like it, along with everyone that I've talked about so far. Next is the oldest Marlin lever gun in my collection, and this is my 1980s vintage 336 chambered for the 35 Remington cartridge. This rifle is the first one in the lineup so far chambered for a true rifle cartridge, and I really like the 35 Remington cartridge, and when coupled with the 336 rifle, which now I'm up to a 20 inch barrel, really makes a good combination. It's hard hitting for anything from close to medium game. It's also still relatively light in terms of the recoil that it produces. It has a good sight radius, and this is another one that I still have the factory semi-buckhorns on. And all around, this is just a really, really nice package. I very much like the 336 chambered for the 35 Remington. And I'll give you a closer look at this one. Very, very nice rifle, as I said, coming to us from, I believe, 1980. I believe this was manufactured in 1980, if I remember correctly. And you can see, even so, the wood finish is still good. The bluing is still nice. It's a very, very nice rifle. This was actually given to me by my son for Father's Day back uh, in the early 2000s, probably uh, 2005, 2006, something like that. He gave me this for Father's Day, so how cool is that? So this is the next contestant for the title of my favorite Marlin lever gun. Next is also a 336, but this one is the 336 Cowboy. And this one, you'll notice right away, or at least you will when I get up closer to the camera, has an octagon barrel, which I think looks cool. It also has a full-length magazine. This 336 Cowboy is chambered for the 3030 cartridge. So a timeless combination of a lever gun plus that 3030 cartridge. I have changed out the sights on this one once again for a marbles tang sight, as you can see there. And I'll turn it around to give you a look at this side. This one has a 24 inch barrel, so along with that marble sight, I have a very long sight radius for probably the best accuracy that I could eke out of one of these systems. And I also paired this one with a Lyman globe sight that, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but it has interchangeable inserts. This one, as I have it right now, has just a straight post inside there, which makes for some very fine sighting. And this one is number five out of six for the competitors in this contest. And last but not least is the hardest hitting rifle of the group. This is my 444 Marlin chambered for the 444 Marlin cartridge. And if you're not familiar with that, I've got one right here that you can get a close up look at. 
This particular one features a hand load. This is a 330 grain bullet. It leaves the barrel of the 444 rifle at over 2,000 feet per second. This is a very hard hitting cartridge. It's in the same class as the 4570, but this is a little bit newer cartridge. The 444 was designed in 1964, if memory serves correct. This is the only lever gun that I have ever outfitted with a scope. And reason being, this one is intended for deer hunting when I'm in a stand and I'm hopefully going to be shooting at a stationary deer or at least one that's not moving very fast. So I have a low power scope on here to try to be able to place my shots as accurately as possible in that situation. But with the scope, this is also the heaviest of all of these rifles. So it's one that if I'm going to a stand, I hope I don't have to walk too far to get to. This is also... I think the only rifle that I have not shown in a video previously, and I really need to do a video review of the 444 one of these days, because it is a fun, very hard-hitting rifle. This is a thumper. <laughs> That's what I like to think of it as. And this is the sixth and final contestant from the table behind me. So now what I'm going to do is work my way back through these rifles, and I'm going to eliminate them one at a time, and as I go, there's going to be fewer and fewer rifles on the table, obviously. And the last rifle left on the table is going to be the one that I choose for my favorite Marlin lever gun. And as I go through, I'll tell you what I like about these rifles and why I have each one of them. And then I'll tell you why I'm eliminating them as I go. And the first one that I'm going to eliminate is going to be my 336 Cowboy. Now, this is the one, if I'm just doing pure target shooting, especially if I'm shooting seated with a rest or something like that, this would be the one that I would choose. But for all-around use, and remember, I'm picking the one that I like best for all-around uh, shooting, the extra-long barrel on this makes it a little slower handling and a little bit more cumbersome than the other rifles that I have on the table here. And I just have the other ones that... Uh, because of their weight, because of the handling characteristics and all that, I like better. Although I do like the 3030 cartridge this is chambered for. Even so, my 336 Cowboy is going to be the first one that I eliminate, and I've got five more to go. The next one to leave the table is unfortunately going to be my Thumper, my 444 Marlin. And the reason, like the 336 Cowboy, this is kind of a specialized setup, and it really is for stationary hunting. Because of its weight and because of the optic, I really don't prefer it for all-around use. I, I like it very much for its intended use, but it's just not as versatile as the other ones that I still have on the table. And for that reason, I'm going to eliminate the 444 next. And I'm down to four left on the table in front of me. And the next one that I'm going to eliminate, and by the way, if you've not seen one of these videos that I've done before, it gets harder and harder to eliminate another firearm from the table after I eliminate each one in succession. So now, as I look at the four that are left here, all of which that I really like, in fact, I like the ones that I've already removed from the table, but looking at these, the next one that's going to leave the group is going to be my 1894 CP chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge. Now, if I was picking a firearm for defensive purposes, this would hands down be the winner out of all the ones that I started out with. It's compact, it's lightweight, it's fast handling. I can remove that aperture uh, disc sight and have a ghost ring style sight that's very, very fast to come up and use at close range. And if you saw the video that I recorded with this where I shot it through the uh, semi-auto carbine qualification course, you know that this rifle did pass that test. And I really, really like this for defensive use. In fact, this would make a great vehicle uh, firearm if you're going to keep it in a truck or in your vehicle. And the only reason I'm eliminating it is because the short barrel and short sight, sight radius does limit it somewhat for actual hunting use or longer range shooting. And I do think in those areas, some of the rifles that I have left in front of me are superior. And for all around use, I think some of them are going to be a little bit better. So the next one to go is going to be my 1894 CP 
but I hate to see it go <laughs> because I really like this little carbine. Even so, I've got three left, so it's time to take a look at them. Of the three rifles that I have left, it's really a difficult choice to decide between them because each one of them is very good in its intended purpose. And I think the next one I'm going to eliminate, this is, this is hard, it's hard to do this, is going to be my 39A. Now, I really like this rifle. It's a fantastic rimfire, but it is chambered for the 22 rimfire cartridge, and that limits its use somewhat in all-around applications. And because of that, I am going to remove the 39A next. Even so, as I said at the outset, this is probably the most fun of any of the rifles that I had on the table at the beginning. I really like shooting this. It's, like I said, it's just fun. <laughs> it's a great rifle. And I hate to take it off the table, but I've got to eliminate one, so this is going to be the next one to go. And I'm down to two remaining. So I've got the winner and I've got the runner-up on the table in front of me. I just have to decide which one's which. Of the two left, I have my 1894 SS, chambered for the 44 Magnum cartridge. And this will also fire 44 Specials just fine. In fact, it's very accurate with 44 Specials, I've always found to be the case, particularly those using lead bullets. And I have my 336 chambered for the 35 Remington cartridge. And deciding between these two is not at all easy, but I'm thinking about the best all-around rifle, or the best rifle for all-around shooting applications. And the 1894 is great, for the purpose that I use it for, which is close range hunting, in uh, close to medium range hunting in inclement weather for game up to the size of deer. And I'm a big fan of the 44 Magnum cartridge. I'm also a big fan of the 35 Remington cartridge. And I think the winner is going to be, or maybe I should say the first runner up is going to be the 1894 SS. And the reason I'm removing it is because it is chambered for a handgun cartridge. So even though it's chambered for the Mighty 44, it's still not going to pack quite the punch that the 35 Remington does. So for that reason, I'm going to eliminate this at this point. So here's our winner. My 1980 vintage 336 chambered for the 35 Remington cartridge. And I think history bears out my decision on this particular firearm because the 20-inch or so lever-action rifle chambered for cartridges like the 35 Remington have been very, very popular since their inception back in the 1890s. And this particular one chambered for the 35 Remington cartridge, that's a cartridge that's been with us all the way since 1906. As I said, it hits harder than its competitor, the 3030. Even so, it does not generate a tremendous amount of recoil. With the 20-inch barrel, I get decent sight radius, and I get very good handling characteristics. And also, with the open sights, I get very fast sighting on either moving game or game that I just want to get up and get on target quickly and get a shot off. I suppose if this was rendered in stainless steel, it would make it even that much more versatile, but I don't have this particular model in stainless steel. And I don't know that Marlin ever made a stainless steel version chambered for the 35 Remington cartridge, which is too bad because that is such a good rifle and cartridge combination. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. Until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.